Salute, thanks for tuning in the Cross TV Network. Y'all already know that's Cross with a K. Definitely always appreciate everybody that tuned in my channel. Show me love. You know, hit me with comments and everything. I definitely appreciate y'all. As y'all know, regards to how long it take or how fast I take, regards to what I try to respond to everybody and try to um, you know, basically give y'all, you know, what y'all want what y'all want to see or what y'all want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Even answering certain questions. Um, for those that's tuning in for the first time, I definitely appreciate y'all. Welcome to my channel. That I hope y'all like my content, you know, um, as y'all will see, it's real authentic, you know what I'm saying, everything I speak, I speak from the heart, so welcome, I hope you subscribe, hit that like, and hit the notifications every time one of my videos come out, whatever you be notified, those that's always been here with me, day one and everything, you know, I always appreciate y'all, salute, and as always, I will never waste y'all time. You know what I'm saying? Time is too valuable. And I know the time that we spending right now, y'all can never get back. So, you know, it's definitely going to be um, worth a while. You know, I always give it to the real and everything anyway. You know what I'm saying? You know, I definitely miss y'all. You know, part of, my, um, part of my little absence, man. You know, um, part of my absence. That's all I'm going to say with that, man. But um, I want to tell y'all what Black History, what Black History Month means to me. First and foremost, those that don't know how Black History Month came about, Black History came about as being Black History Week, um, which was done by um, Carter G. Woodson, who is the father of African American history. He's the one, you know, that wrote the education of the Negro, the miseducation of the Negro. And you look at his accolades, man, you know, his accolades, his credentials is, is, is phenomenal. Um, and one of the reasons why he um, chose February is because um, Abraham Lincoln's birthday, you know, or whatever have you. But I'm not going to um, get into all that. But, you know, it was because, you know, of the uh, um, Emancipation Proclamation, you know, which freed the slaves, quote unquote. You know, um, black history is very important because, you know, as a person, just like, just like when, just like when, um, a tree, when you, when you plant a tree, you want to know where that seed grew into the stem and where everything came from. You want to know who your roots is. You want to know who you are. You know what I'm saying? Who, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, and stuff like that. Um, but it all, not only for your ancestral linkage or, you know, who is your actual blood relative, but also your people's human experience here on this planet. And when you begin to look into history, a lot of us, you know what I'm saying, you know, is ignorant, meaning that they lack of knowledge. I'm not, you know, disrespecting nobody, calling nobody stupid. You know, is that what they don't understand and realize is that our ancestors wasn't slaves. Our ancestors was kings and queens that ended up becoming slaves or, you know what I'm saying, for whatever have you. And to be honest with you, you know what I'm saying, it was certain things going on where tribes was also, you know, you know, capturing another tribe and also selling them off to the Europeans also. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna keep it authentic about that also. That a lot um part of history that people don't um don't want to say about, don't want to speak about. Um but when you look at how we came over here in the United States or how we was treated all over the world, I think that's very valuable and very important because it should it should make us value each other more. You know what I'm saying? Not when you look at black history, you like, oh now dudes wanna be fake talking about this black history shit or this black this black lives matter until somebody in your family get hurt or something happened to you. But why is it a negative thing to know about who you are and your heritage and your and, and, and whatever and, and, and paying homage to your ancestors and at least knowing who they are? Every other culture of all over the world does it and value their ancestors and value those that made their people of importance or the, or the accolades and whatever they accomplished as a people. They put them on a pedestal. It's called ancestral worship. And I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. I don't care whether the person is bad or good. And what I mean by that is this. Every damn near, every city has either a George Washington Bridge, Washington Street, Washington Avenue, 
George Washington High School, George Washington Park, some type of George Washington Monument, and so forth, right? You look on these streets, Sherman Avenue. Sherman was 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 a European in in in, in a um in an army in the United States Army fighting against the um Confederate and and Sheridan was the was the one that if he would have held out for a whole number week. You know, maybe the Southerners would have won and life how we know the United States would have been different. But these are the streets that we call Shiesty Ave and that we represent. You know what I'm saying? When you look at, you know what I'm saying, the Brother of the Bronx and you know what I'm saying? You look at Mount Haven and, and who these people are and who these, who these neighborhoods and these places and everything is named after. These is ancestral worship. These is ways that's going to always keep these people names alive. Keep their legacies alive and keep what they do alive. Because if you want to have an inquisitive individual like me that be like, well, who is Sherman? Who is this? And I do research and I be like, wow, this individual, you know what I'm saying? And this is what they do. You know, I may, I remember when, when, when the, um, I made a video, right? When we was on quarantine in Washington Heights, right? And, um, you know, I was mad that, you know, the um, Dominican brothers over there in Dykeman was under the impression that the brothers was over there looting or whatever and everything was straightened out. So, you know, I'm not, you know, we passed that. But I'm only bringing that up to say this. In the course of all that, in my comments, some people was mad and thought I was on some racist, you know, some racist stuff or whatever have you. And... They say, yeah, well, we come over here and we own stuff and we do this and do that and whatever it can be. Y'all don't own nothing or whatever, whatever, whatever. And I understood where the ignorance was coming from and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? But I want to bring certain things in the light in regards to that comment on why black history and things like that and knowing your own culture and your heritage, why that's so important. Because we know about ancient Kemet and everything, how we was kings and queens and everything like that. So now we're going to talk, we're going to, not to disrespect and everything like that, because that's rich history as also a part of us and, and a part of civilization on this earth, period. But I'm speaking in the, in the realms of the United States history and what people don't know is that there was concentration camps in the United States. It was two of them which had all African-American um, um, people in there, families and everything. Um, but at that time, we wasn't considered African-American. We wasn't citizens or nothing. We didn't have no rights or nothing like that. We was considered property and everything like that. Dogs probably had more rights than we had or whatever, right? Um, we already know how the uh, the whole, um, you know, um, soul food thing came about, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. But, you know... Um, when I speak about Seneca Village, how we had almost 200 acres of land where we had houses, we had schools, we had we had all type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Hospitals. We had our own everything. And when they wanted to feel like they wanted to build Central Park, they just took the land from us. Those that refused to give up their land, they was locked up or whatever happened to them. They didn't, they never, it's so disrespectful. They ain't even record these people's names or whatever happened to these people. You know what I'm saying? My people and everything, they don't even know what happened to these people or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? So when people saying that, you know, we didn't own anything, let's look at um, Black Wall Street over there in, in Tucson, Oklahoma, when, um, the the, the R and B group, the Gap Band, it stands for um G is for um green, A is for orchard, and P is for pine. That district right there, the African American, we had everything. We had a lot of hospitals, you know what I'm saying? The same thing as I said over there um in um in Manhattan, you know, when um New York was being built and everything like that, right? Um the Europeans came back from 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 um for, I think World War II or one of the wars whatever. They came back. They was mad to see us running around sharp Brook Brook Brother suits and everything like that or whatever the case may be. So they made up some excuse about one one African American dude whistled at a white woman, started a whole race war that left you know what I'm saying about over 200 African Americans dead. 
All our institutions and everything we built for burnt down. Same thing happened in Rosewood. You know, people need to understand that every time, a, you know, strong people speak their mind or, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's took it in a wrong way where they, you know what I'm saying, you know, our leaders has been assassinated. You know what I'm saying? Fred, uh, um, Fred Hampton and everything, but they got, but yet, but yet, uh, um, J. Edgar Hoover, you got buildings named after this individual. This, that J. Edgar Hoover was probably the most, the, the most, the biggest gangster to ever touch U.S. soil. And I'm going to repeat that. J. Edgar Hoover probably was the most gangsterous person to ever touch United States soil. He turned the federal. He turned the Bureau of Investigations to the Federal Bureau of Investigations. Where the Bureau of Investigations, only thing they did was they investigated certain things. Whatever, they didn't even carry guns or none of that. But when J. Edgar Hoover was able to make that into a into a, a federal bureau, they was able to carry guns and make arrests and everything. And it was, and then, you know what I'm saying? And then it turned, in, and then J. Edgar Hoover turned into something else. He they came up with the COINTEL Pro. All black leaders was targets. You know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, you know, the history is there. So when people speak about, oh, you know, um, black people don't know how to act or this and that don't know how to go on or whatever the case may be. You know, we got to look at all the different layers of our life and everything, how it is to struggle on being a black man who's supposed to be the king of his household and all the trials and tribulations that he got to go, go through just being born. Let alone actually growing into a man and being responsible about something. People talk about how African Americans act and how we enrage and we doing this and we doing that, whatever the case may be, right? But why we never got, why we never got, why we never got, um, why we never got nothing for slavery? Y'all people, people come back from these walls. Oh, we have post traumatic syndrome. We had this, we had that. We've been fighting wars with y'all for free damn near all our lives. And until recent time, until recent time or whatever, within the last hundred years, something like that. If you was locked up, you could you would you went to the you went to the army or whatever. And if you was a firstborn or something like that, you was going to the army and everything like that. And we was fighting racism at the same time within the army, fighting their wars and everything like that. You don't think we suffer from that trauma? The only difference is y'all get treated and y'all get compensated some type of financial um, 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 compensation for it. And we don't get shit, but get ridiculed and, cru and, and, and crucified. Thrown in jail and all other stuff like that. But people wonder why what we going through or why we why we move the way we is or why we so, you know, we, we discombobulate and everything. Because motherfuckers got people feeling like, you know what I'm saying, Latinos is different from blacks. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we really all we really all one when you really look at that. And I don't even like using that term black because this is another thing why you need to learn who you are in your culture. Because if I say the word nigga and everything like that, a lot of people come on this on on, on come on my video comment and talk all negative and oh Mel, uh, he talking nigga, he talking. Nigga, da, 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 da. But then remember what they said: if you want to keep something made from the, uh, the black man or whatever. And you were the best place to hide it is in books. You keep him deaf, dumb, and blind, he would never find it. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, when you do your own research and when you study and look at the original Webster version of what black means, black means uh, uh, um, devilish. Black means saw you face. Black means uh, uh, um, um, spooky. Black means wicked. You know what I'm saying? Freak coming out at night. You know what I'm saying? Black cat cross your path is bad luck. Anything that's associated with black, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's negative. But then when you look at white, it's pure, angelic, it's holy, whatever the K and B, so forth and so on. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is they disrespecting you in a in a, in a, in a, in a um educated way. You know what I'm saying? They disrespecting us in an educated way because this is one of the um this is one of the um terms that our scholars, you know what I'm saying, you you know, black scholars here in the United States embraced, and which we embraced because before they was calling us Afro Americans or whatever. You know, so to understand a lot of things that's going on and a lot of the rage and everything, everything that's going on, people need to go back into their history and study what's going on. People need to People 
what black history month means to me or what black history or in, in general means or black power and everything generally means is like look i got the casket boys you know what i'm saying jacket on the cash clear jacket on whatever I support my own. I put my, you know what I'm saying? Because imagine, imagine if, you know what I'm saying, we continue to build like how Atlanta is and how Harlem was and everything. We continue to build as a people and our money getting put into different, you know what I'm saying? And our money keep going into each other's businesses, whatever. That same dollar going to keep circulating our hands about 15, 17 times before they even leave our communities. That's just to get more product and feed our peoples. But we in control of everything like that. All the money touching our hands, everybody's eating. You know what I'm saying? This is what black history mean to me. Supporting each other. Supporting our, I'm um, giving our roses. You know what I'm saying? And, and showing those commemorants. You know what I'm saying? The those that's out here really doing something. Showing commemorants. You know what I'm saying? The those that's, that's, that, you know what I'm saying? Inspired us. You know what I'm saying? Those that paved the way or something like that. You know, um, those that's alive and well that you love. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Get them made roses and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, this is, this is what this mean to me. You know, it's even deeper than that. Um, people really need to wake up, man, because there's a lot of ignorance going on. There's a real lot of ignorance going on. There's a lot of disloyalty and everything like that, and it's disgusting. It's disgusting. It's, 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 it's disgusting, man. It's disgusting how, you know what I'm saying, people... You know what I'm saying? Would trade your soul and everything for clout, man. Even the ones that you once slept with or something like that. You feel what I'm saying? You can't really trust nobody. And it's sad because I grew up in an era where it was way more dangerous, meaning that way more people was getting murdered and everything like that. But it still took a village to raise a kid. The neighborhood still raised a kid. Even though it's less, but the morals is at an all-time low. All those concepts and everything is slowly, slowly just dissolving. And we so busy, you know what I'm saying, in competition with each other due to the, but I understand why. This is the thing. I understand why. I understand the indoctrination, the Jim Crow doctrinations and everything that instilled with us. You know, turned the dark skinned blacks against the light skinned black, you know what I'm saying? The tall against the short, you know what I'm saying? The fat against the slim. You know what I mean? You know, they they you know what I'm saying, we 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 know all this, man. But some way we gotta find ways to heal, man. And I don't know, you know, you know, not to you know, make it a joke out of it and everything. I think one of the ways we heal is we, we smoke that bud and we drink and everything like that, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, we had a black president here, even though we had a couple before that. You know what I'm saying? Quote, unquote. And um, I watched him give the Holocaust survivors millions of dollars. People that was already compensated no disrespect to them in their situation. And it didn't even happen on U.S. soil. But we still have not got nothing. We've been with promised 40 acres in a mule. We've been with promised that. We still didn't get nothing. You know what we get now? Even after the Black Lives Matter... You know, the, the the riots and, you know, the COVID shutdown and everything. You know what we get now? Just last week in Rochester, New York. A nine-year-old girl, black girl, baby, African-American girl running around. People saying that, you know, her mother, we, you know, act, you know, saying that she had uh, mental health problems or whatever have you. And when a girl running by her, she act like she ready to beat the girl up and... You know, when um, the police stop her from doing it, but then put the cuffs on the girl, she's screaming for her father. You know, the cops put in it. She, 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 she's scared to go in the cop car, whatever. She's screaming for her father. The police threatened, threatened to mace the girl, the nine-year-old girl, with the, um, with the uh, pepper spray and everything. And because she didn't comply, they felt that it was appropriate to take further duty 
and they figured macing her, pepper spraying her was the best solution. And these are the people that we supposed to trust and give our faith to. You know, to make our community safe. But it's been so many instances that they just continuously disrespect and then they hide under the color of the law. Because when you think about it, they're not paying for the lawyer. The city is. Even if it's their own absence, they still getting paid. It's even better. They sit and they, they can sit, they get suspended. They still can be able to sit down and get paid or whatever. They ain't got to work. You know, that's what that mean to me, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's good and bad and everything. I'm not going to sit here and say that. You know, dudes ain't out here tripping. <clears throat> you know, just last week also in Harlem, a female was coming out of her building, walking by. Another brother, as she walking by, groped her. I guess tapped on the butt or touched her titty or something like that. She ran upstairs and got her man. When her man came downstairs, the dude that groped her shot and killed her man and shot her. Me being an alpha male, when I'm with my lady, you know, when I'm with a woman, I'm not going to feel comfortable with allowing a man <clears throat> to undress her around me <clears throat> or feel comfortable enough to undress her around me. Men like me get ridiculed for behaviors like that or just being protective. But, you know, what I'm saying, you know, I've been through a lot when it comes to that. I'm saying one of my aunts was murdered by the man she loved with an iron in his bare hands. And I know many cases like that. I seen my mother get beat on. I seen her chain get snatched in front of me while I was a, while I was a little kid. You know what I'm saying? So my vibe when it comes to women in my life is different. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, and then the other thing with the, with the, with the in Harlem again, with the, with the, in the liquor store and everything. Shout out to Harlem too, man. That's, that's, you know, that's like my second home and everything, man. And, um, you know, I get mad love out there, man. You know, that's, you know what I mean? I got mad love out there. I be out there a lot and everything like that. And, um, but these behaviors right here, man, this is when motherfuckers are supposed to be answering up. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucking supposed to be allowing this sucker shit. Another thing, the guy sitting on the train, punching his son in the face. He got arrested. You know, these type of behaviors, man, you know, whatever we dealing with, whatever we going through, man, you know, it's been times where we always, I'm always, sometimes I feel like, you know, my back is against the wall, whatever, but Whatever don't kill us don't make us stronger, man. Even when, you know what I'm saying, you might have a wound and everything, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes the healing in the wound, you know what I'm saying, hurts more than actually when you got wounded. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, and this is the things that shapes and mold your character. These are the things that shape and mold you who you are as a person, as us, as a people. But still, as a people, too, we do overstand and know right from wrong, man. You know what I'm saying? So we, as a people, we have a lot of healing and stuff to do. 
You know what I'm saying? We have a real lot of healing to do, man. But this is what black history mean to me, man. Celebrate our existence on this planet, whether good or bad, whether we went through something, you know what I'm saying? Or whether we just was celebrating. Don't take you for granted. When you're not here, you're going to want people to remember you. You're going to want people to keep your name in grace. You know what I'm saying? You're going to want your people to um, th keep throwing up your pictures. You know what I'm saying? You want people to continue to talk about it. Just keep your legacy going on. You know? And that's just things on how we go about doing it. You know what I'm saying? Um... Never be ashamed of who we are. Like I said, man, you look all around, man. These 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 neighborhoods that we come from, these cities that we represent, and everything. These ain't our names. These are their names. These are something that they're celebrating. Their 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 existence on this planet with. They put their peoples in it. These are they celebrate. We gotta celebrate our scholars. You know what I'm saying? Celebrate our scholars. Celebrate the ones that was doing good to encourage the kids to want to do good. Don't only just celebrate, you know what I'm saying, people that are out there doing negative and all that because, you know, as honest, I'm going to give you some honest, man. If I was a nine to five -er that was working and everything, whatever the case may be, y'all would have no interest in me. You know what I'm saying? But because I know my story, I know where I come from, like, not where I come from, because I don't come from prison, you know what I'm saying? But y'all know what I endured, what I have just endured, you know, um, makes it intriguing in a sense, you know what I mean? Um, but when you look at my eyes, man, you know, it tells a whole different, it tells a lot of story, man, because, you know, they say the eyes is the windows of the soul, man. You know, that's why I always look a person in the eyes, man, you know, um, even though in certain cultures, looking a person in the eyes is a form of disrespect, but, you know, um, man, celebrate yourself, man. No matter no matter what people try to do or whatever the case may be, we still here, man. We still here. And we got a whole month to show it. I mean, even though we show it 365, but, you know what I'm saying? I mean, regardless, because some people say that about Mother's Day, Father's Day, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and certain things like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, but... You know, this is the time right now where everybody, mind, body, and soul could be in one energy, in one sphere. You know what I'm saying? Let that motherfucking greatness radiate, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just want to just leave y'all with that, man. That, that's that's what that's what Black History Month mean to me. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's how I want to start. You know, um, this will be my first. You know what I'm saying? Um, Black History Month video. Just, this is how I want to start it off. So anything, come back to that. You know what I'm saying? You know, come back to this. So with that being said, man, thank you for tuning in to 4CV Network. That's Cross with a K. And, you know, remember, y'all, you got to have real tough, strong skin out here, man. You know, there's a lot of snakes. You'll be a lot around a lot of people, man, that mean you no good, man. You know what I'm saying? Cherish the aces. Cherish those... You know what I'm saying? That that you have nothing to offer, but yet, you know what I'm saying? You know, um, nothing changes because you know who your real friend is when you don't need when they don't need you no more. So we ain't offering nothing but a hand, and they're around. You know what I'm saying? Take heed to that. You know what I'm saying? Say heed to that. But anyway, slow things tuning to the 4CV never. That's cross with a K. Peace and blessings.